Good morning, everyone. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we gather together this morning, and now stand just a day away from the celebration of All Saints Day, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your word made flesh in the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains, even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now, hope that sees for itself is not hope. For who hopes for what one sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait with endurance. The word of the Lord. The Lord has done marvels for us. The Lord has done marvels for us. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. The Lord has done marvels for us. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. The Lord has done marvels for us. Restore our fortunes, O Lord. Like the torrents in the southern desert, those that sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. The Lord has done marvels for us. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. The Lord has done marvels for us.
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said, What is the kingdom of God like? To what can I compare it? It is like a mustard seed that a man took and planted in the garden. When it was fully grown, it became a large bush, and the birds of the sky dwelt in its branches. Again he said, To what shall I compare the kingdom of God? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch of dough was leavened. The Gospel of the Lord. I will say this, God does have a sense of humor. The reason I say that is because yesterday I was uh, thumbing through social media for a moment and came across a St. Maximilian Colby quote. Those of you who don't know, that's my confirmation saint name. And I'm like, yes, we're going to post this up in some way, shape, or form. But then I was this line from St. Maximilian that is a little startling. And for, for those who don't know St. Maximilian, he lives up to his name. His, his name, his chosen name, Maximilian, means to go to, like, the maximum. So just think of somebody who turns the dial up to 11. Best way I could put it. But basically, he had said... You know, for Jesus Christ, I will still suffer more. And it's not that Jesus just died ju- just uh, died and suffered, but that he rose again. It's a little bit startling, a little bit much. But even so, it was as I was looking at this, I'm going, I don't know if I can post this outright without putting a little context on it. And so I put a little context of St. Paul, because it kind of came to me in the midst of everything. I consider the uh, present sufferings as nothing compared to the glory that will be revealed in us. And then as I looked at the scriptures this morning while get, praying and getting ready for Mass, I look, I go, well, God does have a sense of humor, doesn't he? Because I didn't even look at this yesterday, and I didn't even know it was the reading. But here it is. Those words of St. Paul, I consider the sufferings of the present age to be as nothing compared to the glory that will be revealed. It puts Maximilian's quote directly into context. It puts everything, as it were, into context for us. But as we sit there this morning and we hear those words of St. Paul, I would venture to say that most of us like it in theory, really don't like it in practice. Is that safe to assume? Are there big fans of suffering in the room? Raise your hand nice and high to be seen. No, gee, not a lot of people. I'm not surprised. Because for most of us, we look at that cross and we go, Jesus, that was awesome. I'm so glad you did that for me. But uh, I'm a little bit weaker. I don't really want to deal with this. I don't want to do this. And yet, what do the saints reveal in their lives? The way that we can start to engage God in the greatest depths on this planet comes by imitating our Lord in all things, including the cross. It's interesting because there's this paradox of our faith, that the more we surrender over to the Lord, the more we live out of this place where we sometimes are led into these sufferings, the closer he draws us in, because we must rely on We cannot do it ourselves. And we learn that our pride is nothing if we're going to be able to follow the Lord and be able to withstand the chaos and craziness of the world. And yet, it's in losing ourselves, as our Lord says in the gospel, that we truly find ourselves. Because in in our weakness, 
we realize we're in need of a Savior, we cannot provide that for ourselves. And so in our weakness, we finally reach out to him for the gifts we need. This is what we are meant to do from moment one. And yet all of us seem to forget that because our world, especially our modern world right now, for all intents and purposes compared to what some of the uh, some others are dealing with in this world, is not too bad. There are people all around the globe who would absolutely do almost anything to have the lives we're living. Do we realize that? Do we realize the fortunate gift that we live in to be able to live out this gift of faith? And yet, for most of us, we don't. We don't understand this gift. We don't live in this place. We fall into this trap of just kind of getting along to go along, and we just kind of look at it. It's like, and every suffering gets magnified under it. But what do we do when these sufferings, shall we say, wash onto our shores? Do we just run from them? Despise them? Try to do anything to get away from them really fast? Or do we turn them into a prayer? A prayer of offering to God in the form of the Trinity to be lifted up for the salvation of souls, including our own. It has the ability to transform us. And indeed, if we look at the trajectory of the saints and what even a St. Teresa of Avila would say about this, is that the further along the path we go, we almost welcome this more paradoxically because of the fact that God instills in us this desire to bring everybody around us with. That our sufferings start to get turned into those offerings for the sake of those entrusted to our care. Friends, family members, loved ones, those who we just maybe are acquaintances with, those we work with, those who are just maybe in our orbit in some way, and maybe the complete stranger. Those who maybe have nobody to pray for them, suddenly our life and our offering of like the, you know, terrible things of the day become a gift of prayer for somebody else that's efficacious. And at the same time, it has a transforming effect on us because we learn more and more the secret of the saints that basically says you can't rely on yourself if you're going to go into the depths of the spiritual life. You can't do it. Because it is impossible to navigate in that particular stratosphere without God himself doing the work. Which means we must be docile. We must be obedient to what he is asking of us so that there is nothing in our way for him to continue to draw us into a greater love. Because at the same token, to kind of complete St. Maximilian's quote, Yes, we're talking about a Christ who has suffered, but not merely about a Christ who has suffered, because he rose again. By placing ourselves in this particular path, what God starts to do is transform us from the inside out so that the life to come that we're all living for, this beautiful gift of heaven, starts to become actualized, not just in some far distant day when the time comes, but in the here and now. The saints talk about entering into a communion with God that they cannot describe. Indeed, John of the Cross or Teresa of Avila or some of these great saints of the church talk about getting so, so into that depth of with God that they say, my words fail me now. St. Thomas Aquinas, you've heard me tell you this story, talks about that fact that he sits before the living God in adoration, and he's so moved that he stops writing after it and says, all of the technical pieces that I've helped describe, everything that God has given me the gift to share with you all is as nothing compared to what I just witnessed. I don't have the words. And it was only a short time later God took him home. Because it was like mission accomplished. There's no words that can describe it as deep as you went in just the technical aspect. He says, I can't convey it. What is it that's being held out to us, my friends? What is it that's being put before each and every one of us 
that is not just for a Thomas Aquinas or a Teresa of Avila or again a St. John on the Cross or even a Therese of Lisieux in her little way who just basically says, I can't do it, I need the elevator to God. God our Father, scoop me up into your arms and lift me up like an elevator so I can experience this. This is for everybody. This is what the Second Vatican Council was driving at when they, uh, all the Council Fathers said there's a universal call to holiness, that you are meant for this union, that it is meant to be yours, and that the gifts we need to live it are right here. In just a few moments' time, you're going to receive the great gift, the source and summit of the entire faith to help us to go there in that sacrifice gift of Christ himself who says, this is my body given for you. Friends, what do we want to do with our lives? Where do we want to go? What is it we truly desire in the depths of our heart? For so many of us, we get caught up in the worldly things, the minutia of the day. When it comes to the end game, we're going to be more worried about the fact that we wanted to go deeper. Not the fact that we wanted to watch another TV show or hang out and just, you know, do whatever or just, you know, I don't know, have another meal or something. We're going to be concerned more about going deeper. So then it's in this light we understand that maximum quote. For Christ, again, I will still suffer for you. Why? Because he knows that the union of God is right there able to take place. So friends, don't be afraid. Wherever the Lord leads you, whatever he permits, it is only so all of us can experience more and more the gift of union with God forever, even when we are now. Trusting in our Lord and Savior, let us lift our prayers before him this day. That the church may leaven the world with compassion and fidelity, we pray to the Lord. Lord that all Christians may proclaim and live Jesus' parables, we pray to the Lord. Lord that preachers and catechists may break open God's word and declare its wisdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord Justice and compassion may spread to every corner of the earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord that for prayers to the sick may hasten the fullness of God's reign. We pray to the Lord. Lord that we may join in God, join God in working the yeast of the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all those who are suffering in the midst of our world, most especially those in the, in, the, in the throes of war, that our Lord's healing hand may be upon them and peace may reign soon, we pray to the Lord. Lord that the dead may be gathered in the presence of God's wisdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord As we lift up Stephen Rashal in the prayer of this liturgy, let us also offer up our own prayers to the Lord in the silence of our own hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord Father in heaven, pour out your grace and mercy upon each and every one of us and help us to be docile to all that you send towards us that we may grow in virtue, grow in your grace, and become the men and women you have created us to be in your image and likeness. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands has become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands has become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. And your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him. Through Christ our Lord, through him, the Lord, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven, the virtues of heaven, and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew palm, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Robin, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, through the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. With blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. On you stay. Qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nomi. Anius Dei, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nomi. Anius Dei, Qui tollis peccata mundi, dona nobis Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
the communion antiphon. Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering to God. Now pray the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace those you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. 
obey your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that we, what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord, the Mass is ended. Amen. A great day, everyone. Thank you.